said, okay, no problem, I'll back off. He went back up in the hills not to be seen again. All of a sudden, for two or three months, things were fine. They got their lights. They put them up. They were beautiful. Four or five months went by and things were fine. But all of a sudden, that big wheel that spun to create energy down in the pond, the bottom of where the water flowed, began to get murky in the water. And it began to turn brown. And sediment got in it. Slowly but surely, the wheel began to clog up. And it wasn't spinning like it was. And they were losing electricity. One day, a woman came into the doctor's office and said, My child's sick. Can you help us? A few days later, somebody else came and said, My child is sick. Can you help us? Before they knew it, they almost had an epidemic on their hands. And the doctor said, There's something in the water. It's something is in the water that's polluting it. It's poison. It's killing the children. They said, Bro, we can't get the wheel to spin anymore. They said, Our power's gone. They said, The town shut down. They bought the lights, but they ain't got a way to keep them on now. All of a sudden, those young men called an emergency city board, a little county board meeting. They got all in there. People's all around wanting to hear what they're going to do. They started looking back and forth and they said, what happened? What's going on? And the old man said, excuse me. He said, I believe we need to go find the keeper of the spring. He said, that man kept it clean for years and it was working just fine. And all of a sudden we've got problems now that he's not here. He said, maybe we should go find him. The young man said, we believe you now. We know we need that. He said, you think we can find him? He said, yeah, we probably can. They went hiking up the mountain. They looked this way, that way. And all of a sudden, they finally ran into the man. They said, sir, it's bad. Our whole town, our children are dying. Our town is shut down. The electricity is gone. They said, will you please be the keeper of the spring again? Will you show us what to fix? He said, I've been waiting on you. He said, I've walked to and fro on these hills. He said, I saw dead carcass on this spring head. A bunch of leaves piled up and rotten on this spring head. He said, all across here was pollution and trash. He said, I wanted to fix it. He said, but you told me you didn't need me anymore. He said, I backed off and did as you asked. They said, sir, we want you. We'll pay you. We'll pay the price. Just please help us. He said, I'll be glad to. He walked over and began to clean out one. He began to clean out the other. He went over here and cleaned out that one, and he pulled them all apart. The water began to rush again. Just a few short days, it cleaned up on the top of the hill. It was pure and crystal clear again. It flowed down the mountain. Before they knew it, that wheel began to spin. And it began to move back and forth like it's supposed to. And the power began to come back on. And all of a sudden, the doctor said the waters are fine. And that town went on to live. And they realized that day that that man, although he's not seen very often, although his work is not exactly understood, they knew that they needed him. He was very important to their community. What do you say to me, Richard? I'm saying this. Years ago, uh, there was a group and a generation of people that understood that the Holy Ghost of God, He's invisible. You don't see Him. We don't know a whole lot about Him. I know He's here to bring Christ's glory. I know it prays through me to the Father. I know a few things about Him, but I know what it's like not to have Him. There's a whole lot of churches we've got to the place today. If you mention the Holy Ghost, they're scared that you're some kind of wild outfit out shopping somewhere. I'm not afraid of the Holy Ghost of God. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's not a head. He's not a being. He's not a something. He is God. He's God in the third person. He's the one that will come inside of this building and will draw sinners and save them. He's the one that puts marriages back together. He's the one that puts the power in the church and puts the unction on the pulpit and illuminates the Word of God. He's the one that does all the action. He's the executive officer of the Trinity of the Godhead. And He's the one that does it all. But years ago, we started telling Him we can clean our own spigots. We can clean ourselves up. We'll live the way we think it'll be okay and God will just have to live with it. But you know what's happened? The power's grown dim in the churches of God. And young people want nothing to do with the house of God anymore. I don't necessarily blame them. All they've done is heard stories about who God was and who He used to be. It's not enough just to hear about it. They've got to experience the powerful movement of God. If we ever want to see them, want to pay the price. There was a generation that paid the price for the people that are sitting here tonight. And there's got to be another generation that pays the price for the next generation. But we've told the Holy Ghost we can do it without it. Look at the churches in our community. What do they say? We don't need none of that. We've got emotionalism. We've got ways to work it up. We make people feel good. It's a church for people who don't like church. God never asked us to do any of that. God said, seek me and you shall find me. God said, call upon me and I'll send the powerful hand of God. I don't need to be irrelevant. What I need is the power of God because people are looking for something real and you can reach an entire generation who just had God's power to move. 
God moved this week in glorious power and did something far beyond our mind and comprehension. Every single one of these people sitting in here that are younger than 20 years old will never forget it in their life. They'll go to college and professors will tell them God's not real. They say, well, I see your argument. I understand some of your points and you're a lot smarter than me, but I remember that one time two years back at my home church. I said, I remember when God moved and I saw some incredible things explain that. What we need, the greatest need of the hour is for somebody to go get the keeper of the spring. Go to him and say, I'm sorry. We thought we could do it without you. I thought I could raise a home without you. I thought I could do it my own way. I thought I could do this. Preachers, it's easy to get to the place where you just go through the motions and you preach on your own. But you can't really preach without the God of the Holy Spirit that enables us and touches us. And we've got to go. He's the most sensitive person in the only path. He's the most powerful, but he's the most sensitive. This week in this meeting, one person can disobey God and grieve the Holy Ghost. Seen it many times in my life. But if people would humble their self down and say, God, we need you. God, we want you back. God, our country said we don't want you, but we don't mean it down here where I live. Not in my house. God, we want you to dwell with us. And it's not just in the thick darkness, but God, we want you all over us. We want you in everything that we do. God, we'll pay the price. God, we'll pray. We'll live pure. Whatever you want, God, we'll give it to you. God, we just want you back. God, we want you to do something for us. The water's polluted at times. The lights are growing dim. Our country's in a mess. Our young people are spiraling out of control. Demons and devils in hell are battling for their soul, and they want to wreck and ruin their life through Hollywood and entertainment. And all that this world has to offer. All that stands between them and a slippery slope of having a good time and being addicted to this world and falling into hell one day is God's people getting the keeper of the spring, oh, yeah. turning the light on for them, and seeing God move in absolute, yeah. incredible power. Yeah. I ask you this question tonight. The musicians are coming. I ask you this question. Do you believe God? Do you believe Him? What do you want from Him this week? How much are you willing to pay to get it? I promise you this much. We can invite all the visitors that we can find in this community. But when we get here, God and His power is not on this place. It will all be in vain. There's a whole lot of false professions. There's a whole lot of dirty birth and rooms. There's a whole lot of people that come into church and they can't get what they need because there's not enough power there to break through the darkness that's on. We're in warfare. Just as Peter Marshall said, sometimes, Go get the keeper of the spring. He's the only hope we have. America still has hope. That hope's in the Holy Ghost of God. And he begins to sweep and to breathe across the nation. A great book written years ago, Come Old Breath of God. We need the four winds to blow like in Ezekiel 37 over the valley of the dry bones. Because we need a shaking once again in this country. Your family is totally dependent upon it. Your children and grandchildren. All that you ever want to see is totally dependent upon God moving once again. We're in bad shape as a country. We all know it. But there's still good news and there's still hope. I'm not depressed tonight. I'm not popping values. I'm not upset. I'm just looking for some folks that will believe God. Because I know what God said He would do if some folks would go to believing and doing what He asked. It's very simple. One verse, just a few words. But if we accomplish it, the results will last a lifetime. As you stand all over the building, your hands bowed, your eyes closed, they begin to play and sing. Maybe you want to come pray for this week in the revival. Maybe you want to seek the Lord. Maybe you want to ask Him to move in power. I don't know. I'm not asking you to do anything God's not asking you to do. I just know that if there'll be some people that are really getting serious, I know that God will do something incredible. I don't have all the answers. I just know what the remedy is. I don't know the how, but I know the who. I know it's all in the God head. I know that God's got a will. I know that our hope's built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. It's all going to be God.
come into your presence. God, no doubt an unusual message. God, one that, Lord, come, that you put on my heart specifically. God, I don't know what you want to do, and I don't know how you want to do it, but God, I do know that you desire to see you move once again. God, you look for a group of people somewhere that would just give you enough liberty and do enough of what you asked us to do. It's simple, really. But God, we have to bow ourselves and humble ourselves. God, for you to do anything, we've got to get low. And God, we realize that we're in a shape in the country and in our cities and in our communities and in our families, Lord. God, we're on spiritual life support, many of us. And God, I realize there's only one hope. God, it's not in me. It's not in doctrine. It's not in just the meeting. But it's in the Christ. It's in Jesus. God, it's only in you. You, the Holy Spirit of God, how we need a visitation, a real one, a manifested presence of your power, your love, your authority. God, to back away the demons and devils of hell and the darkness of this world. Seal us in with the blood of Christ. Touch men and women's hearts. Draw us close to you. Save our lost family members. Build faith in us. God, restore marriages. God, do for us what we can't do for ourselves. God, we've tried it a long time on our own. But God, we've just produced dirty water. Half empty. Half on fire. Half burning, God. Oh, God, how we need a generation once again that's full of the Holy Ghost of God. God, the authority and the power of God, I pray this week, Lord, that you touch your people. God, give us a burden to pray just 30 minutes a day. Everybody take 30 minutes just to sing God. Lord, there's a whole lot at stake. It's just 30 minutes. God, really just pray. Really just love on you. Come clean. Ask you to forgive. God, I pray you restore relationships amongst believers and brethren in the building. That everybody would be clean. One mind and one accord. And then, God, I pray that you would do something exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask. I pray, God, you do something in such power and authority. God, that demons and devils would tremble. God, you would rebuke everything that they was going to do. God, you would release some folks. God, you would break and say, how shall we steal the goods lest we first buy the strong man? God, I pray that you would do it. God, I pray we'd see a harvest of souls saved. God, I pray that you'd see families and answers to prayer and burdens and heavy loads that folks are carrying. God, I pray that this would be the week that, God, you would do for them what they cannot do for themselves. God, no other reason but for Jesus' sake. God, reward Christ who died for us. Do suffer, Lord, so that we can be here tonight. God, it was your idea of church. Preaching was your idea. Praying was your idea. God, blessing your people was your idea. It's all about you. God, you promised that you would do it if we just paid the price. God, may this week we see something wonderful happen. God, for whatever you do, I promise you, Lord, with everything inside of us, we'll give you all the glory. God, we don't want to taint it. God, the priests couldn't even enter in when the glory fell in 2 Chronicles 7. God, they couldn't even enter in. It was so holy. God, we won't touch the holy things. We'll give you the glory. It's all about you. We sure love you. We thank you for being God. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't leave us without hope. You gave us a remedy. You gave us a verse. God, you said we could have a little revival in our bodies. It may be dark, but the darker it is, the brighter the light shines. God, we can shine on for you. Help us this week. Touch us. Encourage us for the glory of God. Jesus.